get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and how they overcome big challenges in life and business, like the founders of P90X, Atari, Quest. Uh, Tom Bilyeu talked about how he helped build what is now valued a billion dollar company and about the story when he broke, he was broke and actually had to convince his father-in-law that he would support his daughter. Um, our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and lead with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co founder John Corcoran. Uh, it's application only. Today, I'm very excited. I have a friend who I also consider a mentor, fantastic entrepreneur, person, father. You know, husband Tony Grubmeyer, he's co founder of Ship Offers. He built with his two childhood friends, Doug Roberts and Gil Gerstein. 15 years later, Ship Offers is an eight figure business that has been an Inc. 5000 company for the past three years in a row. They ship out over 1 million orders per year. In 2008, he almost lost it all. Uh, he also runs the podcast, The Tony G Show, bringing together his love for business and self-improvement. Tony, it is an honor and a pleasure. Thank you. Hey, thank you, man. This is uh, just a highlight of my morning and my day. I knew I was going to be interviewed by a good friend of mine. I thought, hey, man, let's roll. Yeah. And you know, there's so many. I want to start from early on about where you grew up and everything, but I want to start with today. You're, sure. a, you're a person of the present. And tell me about your day today. You're, you're telling me a little bit before we got started. Yeah, I mean, I wake up every single day with an attitude of gratitude, um, sit at the edge of my bed and stretch three times and say thank you. I love that from Wayne Dyer uh, in the movie The Shift. I saw that and I started instantly mm. applying it to my life. Got dressed and went into action, which, uh, you know, you said a little bit about 2008, which uh, I really wanted to commit suicide. And I received a phone call, then later a knock on the door that truly inspired and saved my life at the time, my friend. John said, your life has meaning and purpose, but what you're doing right now doesn't. So I kind of marinate in the morning about what, is, what does it look like to be present? What does it look like to have overcome literally a living hell yeah. to where I'm at today? And that's why I wake up in just an attitude of gratitude. So uh, I participated at the local chapter of a 12-step program that I'm a part of. I got to chair a meeting this morning. And uh, you know, we, we read out of uh, the big book, which is the kind of the manuscript for the program. And I shared literally an experience, which it, it was interesting for a lot of people. And, and, and if I bring this up, I'll only briefly go about it. Um, talked about being raised in a, a Jewish household, uh, then went and lived with my father, who was Catholic, went to Catholic school, and then got my ear pierced and got kicked out of my house 13, 14. Uh, ended up living with my business partner's family just right down the street. Really? Yeah, for a brief period of time. And then uh, ended up meeting my wife, who happened to be Mormon, right? So I, I came with all these, these backgrounds, these uh, belief systems, and we just put everything in a blender and hit pure way, and we just believe today, right? right? So I led with hope, and I leave every single day with trying to be the light that helps a blind person to see. I literally try to help uh, people um, because people inspire me. So I just like to carry the message. And that's part of the framework that the program has taught me that I've implemented into my life is service. And so I'm a big part of service. So if you ask me, you know, how's my morning? How's my day? I'm just doing what I said I would do when I, when I got sober, which is commit to being of service to help another person today. Why did you share that today as opposed to like anything else you could have shared? I think really, um, I think the world is at odds in a lot of ways. And I think there's so many people uncertain today. And um, I just have hope, man, that people find what they're seeking and what they're looking for and that uh, we can get back to doing what we need to do, which is work on us and not worry so much about what you have no control over. And so I literally try to share that every single day in my walk is, you know, if we spend more time on us than we do worrying about everybody else, the things around you start to change. The things do get better. Um, and, and that's just, the, I think, what I... The mantra that I leave is, you know, if I can't help you, I'll find somebody who can. And so that's kind of carrying the message for me. 
And I think when you ask the question, you know, why that? Because I have a lot of hope today. I have a lot of hope in my life and, and family. And when you're almost a million dollars in debt and you want to commit suicide, you don't have any hope. And so on the opposite of that is somebody who's very hopeful and grateful today that I'm even here talking to you. That I, yeah. At the end of the meeting, some lady came up to me and she was sharing and I said, you know, you look anxious. And she's like, yeah, I'm so worried. And I said, you know, if you would just for one second, just take your two fingers and put it right here and feel your heartbeat and just get really present for a second. Like all the stuff that's going on in your body that you have zero control over, your heart's beating, blood's flowing, oxygen, yeah. Your eyes are blinking. You're grateful. Like when you start doing that, you can get super present. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not trying to go like crazy in a mindset thing, but it's really like how I simply yeah. get present is I literally just start to feel. And I've done a lot of work. Um, one of my mentors and coaches, Sean Stevenson, we've been working a lot on the five senses and what does that look like and how do I apply things to my life? And, yeah. and, and literally, I think when things are going wrong, we have that fight or flight mechanism. Like we want to go. He's been helping me to stay. Stay. So if I stay, what does that mean? That's interesting. I got to get present because my instant reaction is I got to go. I got to go because it's somewhere mm -hmm. else I need to be. Yeah. And that's part of my addiction. Yeah. Give me an example. Like, so what's an example of that? It was just the other day. Yeah. Uh, it has a lot to do with electricity for me. Uh, so when um, my pulse isn't like 100% working and it's elevated or or it's too low. I want to, I want to, I got to fix something because I, I feel myself not present. And I feel like, you know, I was in Vegas. So talking about being an addict, I was gambling. Right. And so as I'm withdrawing money, my, my sponsor ends up calling me and he's like, Hey, how you doing? And right then and there, it's my fight or flight mechanism. I, I want to lie because I don't want to tell my sponsor I'm sitting here gambling, but I said, no, I'm, you know, I'm gambling a little bit of money here in Vegas. He's like, how you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm losing. And that's the stay for me. The stay is not to run, not to hide, not to lie, just to be present. Mm -hmm. And then we, we continued our conversation. And then I ended up calling him back. I'm like, all right, cool. I won some money. It's <laughs> as bad as it was. It's going to be okay. And, and, and that's part of that whole in the moment decision, right. right? Do the next right thing. That's the, that's the mentality that I've been taught is to do the next right thing. So the old Tony, the personality of 38 years of living before I found my way into the rooms and right. got sober, the old way would be to leave to literally flit, get on to the next thing because the next thing is probably the better thing to do. And then the new mindset is, is stay, pause, breathe, feel, smell, see, touch. Everything's going to be okay. It's, it's not like something dramatically changed. It's this that I now understand the power of intention and the power of mindset and being present. And when that happens, like I still boil. I still, my thermometer is always around like 99. It's always right about 100. And so I will get agitated. I will get frustrated. Someone will say something and I'll explode just because that's a natural 38-year um, philosophy. Yeah. So coming up on eight years of sobriety has really taught me I'm still an immature little baby. I still can be the Toys R Us kid kicking and screaming when I don't get what I want. But in the reality, <laughs> right. life just seems to work yeah. today when I get out of the way and realize that I'm not as important as I think in my head. Like, I know I, I play a major role in my business, right. in my marriage, in my life, my friendships, et cetera. But the importance that I have to concentrate on is not so much what needs to be changed in the world as what needs to be changed in me. And if I change my attitude, that's why I call my program an attitude adjustment, right? It's, I didn't make the name up. It's just what I have been passed down to understand is like, that's why I go in the morning. I, I go to get an attitude adjustment so I can go about the rest of my day because the people I run into don't necessarily carry the same mindset and good for them. If it works for them, great. But the thing for me is, is that in my life, in my moment, when I'm, you know, I'm up against two business partners, you know, every single day, even though we have a tripod philosophy, I still bring my, my level of expertise, my mindset to every situation. Some, you know, get up and do meditation. Some go to the gym and work out. So we're all coming from different angles. Yeah. So when I get into a room and we start talking about a subject that, you know, is uncomfortable or whatnot, I literally just have to pause. I have yeah. to stay. And yeah. then once I do that, everything else seems to work okay. Yeah. You know? I mean, Tony, what's uncomfortable for you? I mean, you talk about almost practically everything. What could possibly be uncomfortable for you in a room? Um, heights. So I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> No, I'm dead serious. I, um, when I was a kid, 80, 100 foot cliffs, no big deal. I could jump off of them. 
you know, our roof when I was a kid running through the neighborhood playing hide and go seek. I could jump with no fear, no doubt, no worry. And today I'm afraid of heights. And um, so I think the things that scare me yeah. um, is not the uncertainty of the world. You know, a lot of people manifest like, oh, my gosh, all this stuff's going to happen. I'm like, it's going to happen no matter what. Um, Jim Rohn uh, says, and I use this line, I love this. He says, you know, what is what is the last 6,000 years look like? Difficulty mixed with opportunities. What does the next 6,000 years look like? Difficulties mixed with opportunities. Yeah. And so everything in the moment for me is really getting back to kind of a mindset of the framework that I truly believe that everything's going to be okay today. And if I go into everything like that, I'll be prepared for the worst because it can't be any worse than wanting to take your life and right. being to drugs and alcohol and to literally be separated from your wife and have all the things that have I've participated or had happened to me in my life. Like, it's okay. And, and my wife reminds me, which is one of the reasons why I'm so thankful that I've got people to help me is the stuff that I'm dealing with today is very small. It's, you know, first world problems, right. a lot of major stuff going on. So right. that once again, helps me to get out of my head and into somebody yeah. else's. Yeah. And once you do that, man, I'm in a much better place. Yeah. yeah. You think about where you were and that you're grateful for where you are now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, you know, just like I'll, I'll share a little bit about my uh, my oldest. You know, my oldest son was diagnosed um, in August of last year with type one diabetes. Mm. And I look at this strong, young individual with the whole world in front of him. And I admire his just drive. When you ask him what it is, he goes, it's just part of me. It's life now. It's not that big of a deal. Right. But you wouldn't wish it on anybody. But here's a guy who's saying, you know what? It is what it is. He takes his little little black bag with him and he rolls and he, and he just lives and has a smile on his face and doing great things and applying to colleges. And I'm just like, what, a, what an absolute uh, gift. Yeah. That's once again, goes back to being present, presently able to be there on this journey with my child where um, push came to shove. Like. I had some, you know, turbulence with him growing up and it wasn't on him. It was on me. And, um, I just, I admire what was really going on in the world today. And that, and that gets me back to like first world issues. Right. And yeah. I just see a lot of people overcoming surgeries and one of my dear friends is, is, uh, with hospice care right now. And I'm, mm. He's the first person I, I met when I moved to Colorado and I just, you know, I just want to be with him. You know, I just want to be there to just squeeze his hand and let him know it's all going to be OK. Those are the kind of things that I think frighten me enough is that I have a belief system today in a higher power. I have a belief system that everything's going to be OK. I just want to be with people, man. I want to help people get through whatever it is that they need to go through and just know that it's all going to be OK. It just may. Uh, it's like the the track and there's different hurdles on there. Some are small, some are big. It's just never stop running. Just mm -hmm. keep keep going and you know right. and, um just when you think that the end is the end i just truly believe it's the beginning that's my faith that's my belief system so man i appreciate you i i yeah. think asking these questions uh, back at you um and right now like I, I remember when i was introducing i introduced you to jason weisenthal and i said tony's amazing he gets real real quick and that's what i said <laughs> you know and, and i love that about you and why, why was, do you want to be around the bush? Why, why, yeah. why do you want to build something for so darn long with somebody? And then you're like, it's like Southwest flight. I took it the other day. It was Reno to Vegas, right? Yeah. It's up, a, mag, a bag of peanuts, and you're down, right? right? I had one of the most real conversations with somebody in such a short period of time. <laughs> laughing, having fun. Could you imagine how we live most of our life? We never get real. Yeah. I say that because was it always like that? I mean, when you... When things were bleak, were you the opposite at that oh, point? Like, were you trying to hide things? Like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, before that, before yeah, now, what was it like? That I had was I've spent yeah. a lifetime trying to look good to avoid looking bad. Mm -hmm. So if you really can visualize what that truly means. So my childhood, um, I had two amazing parents bring me into this world shortly after getting, uh, giving birth to, uh, myself. My dad asked for a divorce from my mom. Hmm. Parents divorced. I think it was three months old when they, they wow. my, my dad ended up telling my mom sometime later that, Hey, I'm leaving. I'm gay. Wow. So instantly when I, when I found out about that, that was something in the seventies that wasn't discussed openly. 
that created, I'm not saying that was the only reason, but that created a, a lying mechanism in my mindset, which was I have to tell people it's okay and I have to make people think that I'm okay but in the reality of the world, I'm truly not okay. I'm mm. lying, I'm hiding, I'm stealing, I'm acting out, I'm getting in trouble in school, blah, blah, blah. And you heard me say I went and lived with my business partner. All of that's a part of that, that mindset, which right. was, let me, let me boast, let me make everything look good, but inside I'm dying. Right. Today, though, I'm so blessed and grateful that I have tons of mentors. I have 24-7 accountability. That's how I built kind of structure into my life is that – I had all of this falling apart, and now I know what life looks like when it's together. So why would I ever want to go back to where I've been? Because I don't live there. Right. It, people, people often choose to go in the direction that was easy, which is, let me go back and relive my past. Let me go. I don't want to relive my past. I don't. Not at all. For yeah. not even one second. All the accolades, everything. I did it. I want to go do some new things that I've never done. And that's the vision that I literally help people to see is like, yeah. it's not happening anymore. It already happened. What's happening is that you have a wide open, clear picture of a future that you can create anything and everything that you actually desire and visualize in an abundant mindset, you can go achieve today. The only thing that stops you is the limitations you place on yourself. So if people hang around with you and don't inspire you, stop hanging around with them. You don't have to let them go as friends. Just don't hang out with them as much. Try to find out like what it is that you want, where you line up with the actions that you're willing to put in today. Because, man, it's not easy. I literally fall into bed around midnight and I wake up around five o'clock in the morning. I, I sleep about a half hour more than I used to in my when I was 18 and in my 20s. Um, and I and I truly believe it's like ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Right. So when I fall down and, and literally uh, crash and my wife will remind me a couple times a year, she's like, you're heading for one of those crashes, Tony. You're, you've literally gone 24-7 for 200 straight days. You are going to get sick. Yeah. And so I was at an event last year, and I literally just heard it, and I'm like, I'm not. That, once again, is somebody telling me something that I'm going to adopt, and I'm going to truly believe I'm going to get sick. Mm -hmm. So now I haven't been sick in over a year. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It's just, no, I'm just kidding. It's just one of those things, right? So, yes, how do I get real with people? Yeah. I know what the opposite looks like. I know what the lying, stealing, cheating, hiding, all yeah. those things look like. So now I know what the opposite looks like, which is, man, I have a wealth of friends. Yeah. I have a lot of great people in my life who keep me 24-7 yeah. accountable to my mission. And, and people know my mission. And, yeah. and people will call me out and go, hey, man, you're, you're, steering, you're pivoting to the left. You're pivoting to the right. I'm like, hey, thanks for calling me out. That's the accountability that I choose to have mm -hmm. in my life. So if I'm going to spend any time, any time with you, it, it needs to be intentional. Yep. It needs to be on point. It needs to be where are we going? Now, if you say to me, hey, Tony, let's just block off an hour and just laugh, make jokes, have fun, no, no real cookie cutter subjects or anything like that. There's a different version that will come out. That's yep. the character that does voices and starts getting crazy and will put my hat on backwards and ride around on my tricycle and, and you know, tell stupid jokes that you won't laugh at. Like I have that. 99% of the time, like I'm doing something because my vision of where I'm going, I can't get derailed. Yeah. At what point did that change that you shifted from the hiding? Because to I'm just completely up front and I get real, real quick. What point did that? Because that's not an easy thing to do. No. And I think when I walked into the rooms and I said, hey, I'm Tony and I'm an alcoholic. That was the first time in my life when I got honest. Hmm. That was the first time that I, you know, I'd done some pre-work. I was in a couple seminars, landmark education. I'd, I'd done a couple things. And, yeah. um, but it wasn't until I walked in the rooms. I haven't had a drink of alcohol since I, I stepped in the rooms. Um, I see a lot of people come and go. I see a lot of people struggle, and, it, and it's not easy. Right. You know, it's a, a, a disease that doesn't care your color, your skin, where you're from, how much money you do or don't have. If you're out on the streets or, you know, got a comfortable house or you're living in your car, it does not matter. And um, I had the phenomenon of craving. And once I was able to identify um, why I drank, it's because I was hiding. I was hiding from everything that was going on in my life. And I was chasing something and it would be that elusive state. I'd get a little taste of success and then I'd go celebrate and then success would leave and then I'd be hung over and then I'd be miserable. And then I, I was always trying to get back there. And, you know, that's been one of the hardest things, too, as an entrepreneur and a business owner out and about going to networking events and 
Uh, everybody wants to drink. And I'm not saying everybody, but I'm saying a lot of the people that I hang out with can have a drink comfortably. I look at them and I'm like, going, that's like a Pringle for me. Hmm. You can have one Pringle. I can't even have one Pringle. Right. So that's why I know I can't drink. I have to have the whole can of Pringles, and then I'm looking to see if I can eat one of your Pringles from your can. Right. I don't drink today. Right. Your mom was a huge influence for you. Oh. Early uh, on. Yep. Talk about, um, you mentioned a little bit about growing up. Where did you grow up? Santa Cruz, California. Okay. One of the reasons why my mom is not only one of my greatest mentors, she was my first mentor. Um, you know, early on, I, I thought it was my dad that was my mentor. I thought my dad was the guy I wanted to be like. And um, I've been doing a lot of work around this lately. In the last couple of years, I've been spending a lot of time writing and, and actually getting really clear of a couple of things. See, whoever we model ourselves after, we can, we can become that person. We can become like that person. If I studied enough tapes of Michael Jordan, not at my career, at my age, I couldn't be Michael Jordan. I know I'm a <laughs> fan, but I know that I could start to go on the court and do things like Michael. Like I could, I could shoot like Michael. I could show up at the gym like Michael. I could do right. a lot of things like Michael. Right. I studied my dad. I watched my dad hmm. do business. I watched that he used to produce the Miss California pageant for over 30 years. Really? He was a successful interior designer. Oh. Um, the president of the uh, Interior Design Association for his chapter in the Bay Area. Um, just an incredibly talented individual. But he couldn't manage his money. And I watched him make millions, lose it. I watched him make millions and lose it. And uh, along the way, he had a drinking problem. So what did I do? I, I modeled myself. I saw where he kept his cigarettes and started smoking those cigarettes. Hmm. I started seeing the scotch that he was drinking. I was drinking the scotch. And so the whole time, I didn't think anything about my mom other than I loved my mom. She was great. Anytime I needed her, she would pick me up, take me to where I needed to go. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. And then I really have, have spent a lot of time in reflection and looking at my mom, looking at a, a lady who grew up uh, in a broken home, parents divorced fairly early, moved to California with my father, ended up uh, going to San Jose State, getting a teaching job, becoming a special education, so a special ed teacher for 30 plus years. She wow. taught special education um, on a teacher salary. Um, bought the house that she ended up selling for just under a million dollars some 30 years later. She owns another property in Santa Cruz that's got to be, you know, a decent amount of money. And she lives basically no bills other than just day-to-day -day operations of mm -hmm. bills. She has no, no housing payments. She lives six months out of the year in the UK and six months, right? In, right? So why do I say this? Because behind all the successes, here's what I learned. Yeah. I learned that she did anything and everything that she needed to to become successful. She put food on the table for my sister and myself. She worked two and three jobs, morning, noon, and night. She fell into bed. She did it all over again, and she did it because she absolutely 100% loved my sister and myself, and she wanted us to have the things that she didn't have, yeah. but she instilled great work. Ec uh, ethics in my life, she yeah. taught me that the importance of being a gentleman. She taught me the importance of being your word. She literally inspires me. I talk to my mom almost every single day. Yeah. She's the one who wrote me my letter. She was the one who, on uh, December 14th of 08, I said I had it all figured out. I was doing some homework for uh, Landmark. And she said, you know, Tony, can I talk to you about something? And I'm like, oh, gosh, here we go. 44 minutes later, I finally said at the 45th minute, you know what, Mom, you're right. I do need help. What did she say to you? She basically said, like, you know, I've been in those rooms because I, I went to like an Al-Anon type environment to, to learn how to deal with your father. Yeah. She said that the men and women in the rooms could save me, meaning the sense of like they would be there to help me. Um, they weren't going to save me. The only person that ever been able to save me is me saying I needed help. Um, but they were going to be there to help me, that they would love me. They would they would show me compassion if I actually became honest. And I, I remember still to this day, I hung up that call and I made another phone call to a friend and I said, hey, I failed the test miserably online. It says it. I think I got a drinking problem. Would you take me to a meeting? He said, sure, let me be of service. I'll take you to the meeting. And in that, in that whole kind of dialogue, I actually heard for the, for the first time in my life, what would that look like, to be honest? What would that like literally look like, like to utter the words like I need help out of my mouth? Hmm. And so my mom and I talk about it all the time. We talk about really showing up today, really being present, being honest, being open, 
um, sharing, you know, some of the uncomfortable stuff that we talk about so that we can get better than the person we were yesterday. And so, yeah, I, my mom, my mom, <laughs> I absolutely adore this, mm. this being who, um, like a lot of people in my life should have given up on me, but mother's love, you know, is, is strong and she just kept me going and she that's why you know she was pushing me all the time she was always saying you could do it you can do it you can do it and um, I think it's so important that I give my mom credit because a lot of people have bad relationships with their parents and she also helped me to realize you know that you know these are the two people that bring you into the world you don't have to have great relationships with them but you do owe them respect they brought you into this world right so my mom's always given me the I think the tools and the framework to to really to be grateful so Tony, I'm trying to picture Tony G teenage years. Um, <laughs> what what did you want to be when you grew up? When you were in high school or junior high? Uh, always wanted to be an athlete. You did always. Once uh, I got a taste of what uh, being an All American water polo player looked like, I had this idea. How tall are you? Six six. Six six. Okay. I'm like a toothpick with meat, you know. So I uh, was skinny <laughs> in high school, and and I, I just love the sport. I love the, the concept of I was alone in, in the goal for six, seven hours a day in practices in college, et cetera. You know, I overcame. I had trouble drinking in high school. Really? You know? Yeah, yeah. I had, um, it was so funny. My first fake ID. It always tells you your life works out when you start talking it out. It really, really, really does. My first fake ID was a Colorado license. Now, I live in Colorado today. I wasn't back then. Um, paid like five or ten bucks up in uh, Market Street in San Francisco, and my name on it was Al K Holic. So you know the ironic. Are you just, serious? That's serious. Yeah. yeah. You know, and someone was, would actually let you let yeah. you buy alcohol with that. <laughs> Come on, dude. Al Holic, you're not looking at the K, right? Um, oh and God. So the guy that you want to know what it was like in high school is this guy right here. You know, just having fun. Life's too short. Like literally, go out and enjoy and. So, yeah, I had dreams of being an athlete. Um, I thought I could. Um, had multiple knee surgeries, which eventually led me to kind of that whole mindset of it's over. And that's where I eventually ended up trying to commit suicide. I've had six knee surgeries, three on each. Wow. I'm talking about um, getting a partial knee replacement on my, my right knee. And then I had a conversation just last week with a good buddy of mine, a family friend in Las Vegas. And uh, I am just started to implement that whole thing, kind of like the mindset around sickness. I'm just not thinking about it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to I'm going to do all the work that I need to. I'm going to make sure that I rehab it even more than I've been. I'm going to stretch it more. I, I'm literally going to will it to heal it. And that and and that's the that was the athlete mindset. Also, there's nothing that's going to stop me. Right. Now we all know that things are going to come your way that you have no control over. But the things you do have control over is what you occupy all the time, which is the mind. And right. you literally have to steer it away from danger and because it's instantly is trying to keep you from getting hurt. And um, so the conversation that I had last week, man, I'm just going to wheel it to heal it. I'm just going to get it better. Even from a young age, though, you were very entrepreneurial. Oh. And, right? I mean, you started multiple, multiple businesses. Yeah. I, uh, I remember selling baseball cards out of my garage. Um, this is the dishonest part. So if you bought a, a baseball card from one of my shops in the early days, I apologize. The signatures are fake. Uh, but I had grab bags because I saw them being modeled at local card shops. So I literally would sign a card like if it was Jose Canseco, I could scribble his name, put in a little bag and you'd buy it for a buck. And, you know, it'd be like one or two Jose Canseco cards, you know, signed. No, I, I did early on. You know, I learned a lot about hustle. I learned a lot about what it looked like. And then I had a variety of jobs from working at the Goodwill, donating my time to the bike store, to working on uh, repairing VCRs, to the liquor store, to the boardwalk, to flipping burgers. And that led me basically into after college, I got one of the jobs at a radio station and uh, one of the managers said, Tony, you got two choices. You can go flip burgers at, at Burger King or McDonald's or you can flip records. They both pay eight bucks. What would you like? And I said, I don't want to smell like grease anymore because I've been there, done that. Right. Um, so I said, hey, you know, I'll flip LPs. And, and LPs had really transitioned to CD. So it was just more of a visual for people. Right. And so, yeah, I've, I've held uh, somewhere probably around, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on the, the light, light side, about 21 jobs. Cause I've literally haven't had a job since I became a full-time believer 
that I can do anything I want. And I went into business with my two childhood friends, which really looks more like play to me with a job associated with right. the time, right? I got a business, so. By 20, I read that, is this true? I don't know, I think it is. Uh, by 25, you made your first million dollars. Uh-huh, So yep. what was life like as a 25-year-old? Um, an excessive abundance of everything that was bad. Like what? You buy a house, it looks great. You buy the fancy cars, looks great. Uh, you got money in the bank account, looks great. But dying inside. Not even the, even with all that, yeah, yeah, and that's why, like you know, being a host of a podcast myself, one of the things I say is I don't want to talk about your money. Your money, see, money is like this disguise, this thing that we 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 crave. You and I have been talking for whatever we've been talking. How many times have you taken a breath this morning? A breath? What do you mean? How many times have you literally opened your mouth and breath and breathed in and out? How many times? No idea. I want to focus more on that. Yeah. So the money is something that you need. You need oxygen and you need money and you can pretty much live a good life, right? So I'm, I'm not going to focus on the money. I lead with my heart. My wallet then takes care of itself and I, and I just bring value. And so the reason why making money wasn't the right thing for me is because I fell into my dad's trap. I made it and lost it. And, I, and that, you know, I don't need to do that too many times to realize what, like, I almost, I was on the verge of bankruptcy when we left California uh, in 08, I had an option. Uh, I needed to short sell my house. Um, and I had a Mercedes Benz CLS that I somehow made a stupid decision and I bought a AMG 55 um, for $100,000, $200,000. And I went out to literally go buy a Saturn convertible. I, somehow, from my wife and I, ended up at the dealership. Next thing I know, I'm driving home this car that I do not need. And I couldn't drive. Uh, literally, my payment was like twenty eight hundred dollars a month, wow. right? and I had the money to support it, but the mindset wasn't right. And I remember taking that car back and saying, "Hey, I can't do this." And they're like, "Hey, I can give you the CLS five hundred. I'm like, "All right." And my payment was still like seventeen hundred bucks a month because I was so upside down. And so, as we were getting ready to leave California on July second um, of '08, I literally knew in the back of my mind I needed to turn that car in. Which is, I, I needed to let that go. And so I drove to the dealership and the gentleman came out and I literally handed him the keys. He's like, Tony, what are you doing? I'm like, I, I can't take this car anymore. I said, I got to turn it. He's like, you know, you're responsible. I'm like, I know I'm totally responsible. I'm now responsible. I now know, and I got the date wrong. Sorry, it was, it was um, in 10, July, uh, July 10, July 2nd, 2010. I said, now I know that I'm responsible. And that was another part of this whole story, this transformation piece that I'm taking personal responsibility. Hand him the keys, walked about a mile and a half. One person I called was my mom. And I just talked to her, you know, and she says, hey, son, it's all going to be all right. It's all going to be okay. You just did the next right thing. Just keep doing the next right thing. And I literally just remind myself every single day, just do the next right thing. And you know, it's crazy. Um, that isn't anywhere on my, my credit. It just disappeared. I really? just called another one of those knocks on the door hmm. that just saved my life. That just in that moment and uh, moving moving to Colorado, I was just about a million dollars in debt from a short sale and loans and everything else that I had. And um, yeah, I just finally been made able to pay it off last year or so. And and literally kind of paying back is really the people. Congratulations! That's yeah. It's a you know it's interesting because I think that's part of the whole reason why I don't talk too much about money is because I obsessed over it for so long that I was, it was the opposite. I had none, right? And, and uh, today, man, it's just uh, I live in that abundance mindset, you know, and I just believe everything's going to happen, and uh, you're just experiencing it. I, I think everything's already happened. I already, you know, saw this conversation years ago. Uh, I believe that friendships are like gold to me. I, I mine them not for to extract money, but value. Like right. I want to talk to people. I want you're a thought leader in my opinion. You're out talking to some of the world's just most influential people. I mean, the, just the names getting started today. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible. That's incredible. I want to, I want to go meet new people, you know? And so mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I think when I talk about money and I talk about abundance and my mom and the, my business partners, man, I, I, I cannot believe these two guys did not throw me to the curb. I, I cannot believe these two guys um, 
didn't say, hey, you know what, this is not working out. We got a, we have a buyout here for you. Go ahead and sign it. We're done with you. We're better together. I do. I truly do believe that. Um, and that's why I think, you know, every single day, man, I come to work to play, to have fun, to help inspire the, the crew that's out there. Um, I don't like the word employees. I like teams. I think we're, we're all a bunch of players on a team and we're all trying to win today. And the goal is really to, yeah. to, to, to be a strategic partner. And that's what I think I am also in life. What was the business like then at 25 compared to now? Well, I was involved. So 25, I was just finishing another business with one of my partners and it was good. I mean, it was, it was destructive to my marriage. I was gone all the time traveling. I was going to shows and plays and, you know, sporting events and, you know, I think reality was is that I, even though I was married, because we got married really, really young. I think my wife, she was 20, I was 26. So, you know, just, just getting married, just tasting life and money and everything. Yeah. Um, it really wasn't, um, it's crazy, man. It, it, was, uh, it was fantasy. It wasn't reality. It was total fantasy. Anything you wanted, you got. What Any, kind of business was it at the time? What, it was a supplement business. It was. Oh, okay. My first supplement company and then made a lot of money and then um, walked away from all of it. Put the keys on uh, the business partner's desk one night and took Gil and said, hey, it was October 20th, 2000. I said, I'm done. I'm out of here. Peace out. Let's go. And uh, the reason is, is like, uh, I don't like to be controlled by anybody. I really don't. I mean, I, my stance changed because now I'm talking about something that I'm like, you know, that I've had to do a lot of work around. I don't like to have people control me. And, um, and, and what I learned was why don't I like to have people control me is because I don't want people to tell me no. Hmm. That goes back to my childhood. That goes back to trying to look good to avoid looking bad. goes back to all the things that, you know, create, this patient mechanism that I have to make sure that I pull. I mean, my first reaction is, is I have a whole bunch of words that I'd love to blurt out right now, but because of my patience and, and the work that I've done, I'm able to refrain from wanting to say those things. The reality is, is that I wasn't proud of the person I was. The money didn't make me a better person. And then losing it, everything gave me great perspective. That's why the mindset now can focus on the mentor of my mom. My dad was a great lesson somebody who I studied and learned a lot from. But there was this person who was quiet in the side, like didn't say, look at me, look at me, look at me, but was quietly building an empire. A couple homes, teacher salary, working three jobs, putting food on the table, right, right. wasn't getting rich, but she was doing awesome. And that, that is where I like to go in my life. Yeah. So when you put the keys on the table for you, <laughs> was that a note? Was you, did you, did you, Talk to him on the phone. What did? What was that like? At this no, time? I, it's October twentieth, man, two thousand. Literally, uh, Gil, myself, we uh, we left our house. I told my wife earlier in the day. I'm like, hey, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And uh, she's like, yeah, I support you. So I called my business partner, Gil, and I'm like, hey, gee, can I talk to you? He's like, yeah, what's up? He's like, um, I gotta go. He's like, okay, hang up. He's like, no, no, I gotta go. I can't. I can't be a business partner of this guy anymore. And he's like, all right, yeah, yeah, what do you mean? He was like, I got to leave tonight. He's like, click. And, and he went back and he called me back about 30 seconds later. He's like, hey, can I talk to you? I'm like, yeah, I'm signing a new mortgage right now for a house. I'm, I'm trying to buy my house. Are we going to be okay? And I'm like, hell yeah, we're going to be okay. Just sign the damn piece of paper and see it in my house. Click. And that's how I kind of believe uh, life is, right? You're in that moment. There's so much fear and you're just like, I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm like, do the next right thing, bro. Sign the piece of paper because the ink hasn't dried and we're leaving tonight and you're going to get your home and everything's going to be all right. And I just truly believe that if you just keep moving forward, everything's going to get better. But you're going to have to go through some of the pain. So he and was worried at the time you were leaving and he was signing yeah, for a new house. Gil, and there, we, had a, we had a couple other business partners. And so Gil came to my house. We, we, we got all our stuff together. I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to We'll go in and we'll grab our stuff. And when we go there, my, my old business partner's brother is sleeping in the hallway on the ground. And so here's Gil and I. I actually got lost driving to grab my stuff. Long story short, just so a side note, I'm totally fine with my old partner and friends. And I'm still colleagues with a couple of the guys. And, you know, it's all everything's good business wise. Mm -hmm. 
But the thing is, is like, I literally felt like taking stuff, right? It was my stuff, took it out. And then I just literally went in and put my stuff down on the table. And I'm like, I'm out, done. And no one was around. It was like 11 o'clock at night and went about my life and walked that company still in business to this day, still in business. You want to talk about, I've been in business for this one for 15. That one's probably 18 years and it's still going. So, hey, once again, it proves my point. I'm not that important. Things can go on without me. You're a humble guy. Thanks, bro. You are. Um, so then you walked away from that business. You, mm-hmm. And what were you planning to do at that point? <laughs> um, I'm on the edge of my seat here, so keep me, keep me in suspense. Yeah, I really just, I thought to myself, I'm like, hey, we knew this. I'm just trying to picture this because you have a successful business, and then you're, you walk in the middle of the night, and you just kind of, you're like, I'm done. With it. And Gil was okay with this, it sounds like. Oh, he was scared. His mom calls me his elbows, like, right? Like, I'm his elbows. Like, I help keep everything balanced. You're asking me. I'm crazy Tony to a lot of my friends. <laughs> uh, no, I think because I had confidence. I knew that we had been successful. We've been, I've been selling on the internet since 1996. So I wasn't afraid of, this is 2000, 2001. I'm not afraid. Um, and I said, and, and I also... I keep hearing Yoda's voice when I say I'm not afraid, you know, an empire strikes back and, and he literally says, Oh, you will be, you know, and I'm just like, Oh my God. But no, not, not afraid. <laughs> opportunity, best opportunity in the world. Never been done before. Blank future. What would you do? Right. So I literally right. said, all right, well, we know how to sell supplements. Let's go sell supplements, but let's not sell supplements to be competitive with him. Let's go do something else. So we created liquid. A liquid product went on and uh, started selling that and then in 2000 what was it what kind of it was liquid v it was like a, a herbal alternative to viagra oh okay a letter from pfizer saying you know that's not okay <laughs> <laughs> sorry and our even though our stuff kind of looked like the color of viagra so we, we changed all that and we just changed the name to liquid rx and that was our first product that's what we launched our business 2001 wow. launched energy shots long before five hour energy well wow. yeah. uh, we we're selling like a coffee shot uh, like a tangerine shot and a peppermint shot and that that's kind of what we sold for a while why uh, did you decide on that i'm curious because that's before obviously it be, it was big yeah and oh because we wanted to make money and we wanted to do something crazy and we found a uh a great contract manufacturer out of Kansas who literally said like, Hey, I can make this stuff for you. It'd be awesome. And so we started doing it and selling it and we took it to a lot of shows and it was crazy because in the morning people would come to our booth when we would be advertising and they go, Hey, can I get that coffee shot? Can I get the coffee shot? And their hangovers would disappear. Mm. Just like we had lines down, down the road, just like literally two, three, 400 people. We were calling on the phone like, Hey, can you get us more of this stuff? Can you get us more of this stuff? And it was being overnighted as we were at these shows in Vegas and and really, it was too early for us in our days of marketing and business to understand like what we really, really had. Mm-hmm. Um, I look at today at like Five Hour Energy, and I'm just like, ah, oh, it was another thing I thought of. <laughs> Reality, it's not. I didn't think of it. The lab that I worked with had energy shots, so right. I just say like, right place, wrong time. Right. I learned a lot, and then I literally flipped the script from not something. wrong time, but not the perfect not time. The right. Yeah. yeah. I flipped the script and then I said, let's go sell, let's go make pills. And our first bottle of uh, supplements happened to just be uh, male virility pills. Hmm. It's costing us to manufacture something around like $13 and 80 cents a bottle as a contract manufacturer back in the day. And And that's, that's considered a lot, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I started looking at them, like we cannot sustain a business at $13 a, a, a bottle, we have to figure out something to do. Well, right around that time, um, you know, there was still can spam compliant. It wasn't anything anybody was talking about. We had marketers and we were selling a lot of products, but we figured out something that all the products we were selling, um, were generically named, but they were say distributed by, and there was our company name. So we started receiving all these calls internationally. And so we developed a really big brand from 2000 till 2005 and six. It was our products and, and business was huge internationally. You know, it was 70, maybe 80% international. Wow, business. really? Yeah. And and today it's probably 40, 40% still Fancy. international. Wow. So what, uh, are the, what is that made up of? What Which countries are the biggest uh, sellers? Australia, you still have New Zealand, you've got the UK, mm-hmm. uh, 
you still have a lot of China. It's even it's it's for me it's interesting, right? Because you, you can ma- manufacture a lot of the stuff, but the made in the USA label still people want on their stuff. Yeah. And so Canada is still big. Um, and, and then we've had our troublesome countries that we just know we can't ship to over the years. I mean, with, you know, you said a million plus shipments. I mean, we've had our fair share of problems with customs and issues with countries saying, you know, you can't ship this in. You can only ship, you know, one bottle or two bottles for consumption. You can't send any more because you're, you know, you're trying to sell it wholesale in the country. So we've had all these issues through life. Um, it just really comes about evolving. You right. know, just keep getting better. But, uh, so it went from the liquid V to the energy shots to the pills. Yes. Um, what, was, what was next? Um, a long run of pills. Yeah. Long run of pills. Yeah. Like, I mean, when can spam compliance happened, um, we just focused all our – because we, we, we tried for a, probably a six-month period of time to sell literally on the internet in this company. And we just – it just – it wasn't our game, right? We were not, I didn't have the marketing mindset to go out and figure out the whole chemistry of getting the buyer to buy and what does that look like and the follow-up series and all that kind of stuff. So once we flipped the script and really just put our head down and focus, we launched a wholesale business. And that's really when I think the whole company, its name, main name is I5. So I5 was formed. We really just became a wholesale company and we, and we, we made great margins. Money was awesome. Serving our customers needs, coming up with new creative products. So I, I've made pretty much everything you can possibly think of in the last 15 years. Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Yep. Breath strips. Um, if you can think of like from lipsticks to patches that you yeah. wear on your arm, um, Pills, tablets, sprays, liquids, loops, potions, and everything you could possibly think of. I've seen it, made it, touched it. I got guys doing uh, coffee cup creamers today, Keurig, like coffee cup creamers um, that have like a weight loss element in them. Uh, there's just a lot of cool products and services that we make today. Um, we got into beauty in 11, 2011. We started making beauty products. Uh, last year, we launched pet supplements uh, for inflammation. So it's, it's crazy. Like one thing started, right, in liquid, and now we're talking a whole bunch of new products. So was it because people were demanding it from you is why you started doing wholesale instead of direct-to-consumer? Yeah, I mean, the interesting part about like how our business works today really takes us back to then. Is yeah. if you could imagine going to the beach. We grew up in Santa Cruz along the, the coastline right there. Yeah. Uh, and you take your boogie board or your surfboard and you go out and you watch everybody surfing and they're all catching waves. And so many people are impatient. They catch a wave and then they crash and they're like, well, screw it. I'm not going back out there. And I'm, I stayed. I always have gone past where everybody's at. I always want to go just a little further and I want to see the horizon and I want to see the sets as they're coming. I want to start forecasting. And that's the great thing about wholesale is that yeah. you don't have to create anything. Your yeah. buyers are already doing all the work for you. Right. They're telling you what's hot in the market. You just have to be great at creating products and services and doing the fulfillment and being your word. So that's all we did. And we just started seeing the trends. And we're like, all right, cool. We've got burned. We've, we've had some products sold. You know, we had an issue in California selling Houdia. Like we sold one bottle of Houdia the night before from the district attorney's office. And we got a cease and desist and all these letters and everything else like happened because we put Houdia up one night. And then this whole claim came out. There's, is there Houdia in your product? And I've been around everything you could possibly imagine, you know. And the, the bottom line is, I think for me, for business and life, just be your word. Just be your word. Focus on the things that make you happy. Bring joy to the people around you. Uh, things are going to happen. It's not what happens to you. It's what you you do with it and how you, you, you make things better around you. Uh, it's been an amazing ride. If you would have told me in 2011 I'd be where I'm at today, I told you no. Our business was kind of like up and down. We weren't doing really well. And then we really just changed our mindset again. In 2013, I went to a traffic and conversions event in San Francisco. Um, I heard... Uh, literally from the stage, oh, my brain is, is drawing a blank right now. Uh, William Shatner said something about, he, he, you know, he had this crazy idea of taking a wine bottle and shoving it in a brown bag and passing it around and like having people think like, what kind of wine was that? And he had the brown bag wine club. And I said, if this old guy from stage is having fun in his 80s, why can't I? And I literally got out of there and I turned around to a couple of buddies. We went to lunch and I said, hey, Will, what do you think of this? Hey, Kevin, what do you think of this? Hey, Chad, what do you think of this? And they go, Ship Offers. I love it. That's a great name because our company was called I5. And so we changed the name oh. from 
five to ship offers, literally leaving a traffic and conversions event. And I literally didn't realize that we just created an eight figure mindset. We literally just changed one thing. Everybody, we still, we still have wholesale. We still do fulfillment. We're still doing all the same things we're doing. We literally just got behind it and got the whole team inspired as a vision to like, hey, we're going to go out and be the strategic partner to elite marketers one shipment at a time. And we're going to do that through a very simple process. Quote, good products, create a really easy on-demand service that allows people the opportunity to not have to spend money to create their own products. We've got 60 on-demand products. We'll slap your name, your label on the bottle, and we'll ship it to your customer. I've been doing that since 2001. The only thing changed was upstairs where we just, hey, we're going to change the name. We're going to get a little excited. Went out, like you said, the Inc. 5,000 three years in a row. That, to me, is a gauge of just where we're going. Yeah. You know, grew 600% last year. It wasn't by accident. It's because I think we're doing a great job in the industry and we're providing a lot of value. And, uh, yeah, man, it's for, I, I can't think that we started with a little bottle of Liquid V to where <laughs> I, I, I guess I can't. Do you still have one of those original yes, bottles? You do. Not, Oh, yeah. We have some amazing products still around from our back in the, the days. We were making rave, like al- alternative rave products in my other company. Yeah, we, we have samples of all that stuff. And it's so crazy as you go and you're like, man, we were so creative. You couldn't read the fine print. The bottle was so small, but we had great eyes back in the day. So you could read everything that was on it. <laughs> Today, I can't even look at it. I need like a, a Cracker Jack magnifying glass to be able to like zoom in on it. But right. yeah. What's hot and trending now in that? Because you have your finger on the pulse of health, nutrition, supplements. What are you seeing now? I still believe in the staples. I still, I still believe in fitness, testosterone, BCAs, nitric oxide, like stuff in the men's fitness arena. Mm-hmm. Turmeric. I believe in the krill, the fish oil. I believe um, when you start looking at it, a great multivitamin is still powerful. Just a great supplement, CoQ10. Some products we don't even manufacture. What do I see trending? Yeah. I, well, it's seasonality for us. So we're, we're getting ready to deal with the, the, the new year, the resolutions. Everybody's mm. like, I got to set new goals. So everybody Way wants more. to eat a lot of turkey, but they want to lose a lot of weight by New Year's. So, you know, you still, your Garcinias, your Forskalins, green coffee's still around. Then I think that you, you also have skincare, beauty products. Now we're launching pet supplements. But one that's really interesting to me is the yeah. whole limitless idea the new tropic like the, the whole, new tropic yeah yeah so interesting that that to me has been one of the ones that is a little bit surprising because you still have your your virility type products for for men and women mm-hmm. you've got this new product and everybody's playing with it yeah one the one side of caution that i would say is yeah. that you know the fda because we're we, you know we're not governed right but we have guidelines right we're gmp certified so we have these guidelines that we yeah. need to fall into and one of the things is, is a lot of people are making claims with this product. Hmm. I saw that back in, in like 98, 99 with Yohimbi. That's on the FDA, like the watch list of like some of these ingredients. You got to be really, really careful. Yeah. Well, we pre-buy everything for our marketers. So I'm buying hundreds of thousands of dollars of product. And if somebody says something wrong, it's I lose out and I'm sitting on this. So we proceed with caution today. We yeah. tell like you need to be a seasoned marketer we need to see your background we need to see what you're good at so we want to partner with the right people today so that's saved because they could ultimately get everyone else along the chain in trouble if they make claims and things like that yeah and we we do our best to. that's tough yeah it is because we'll sell stuff to somebody and there's people out there who will rip the label off i know in other countries that still happens to this day they'll rip the label off and put a new label on they'll get the label and the product through customs and then that's where the consumer has to be really cautious and just mm. careful and do their research and yeah. they're buying from a company go and say can you show me the certificate of authenticity can you show me where this product was manufactured and you know as a consumer I'm also a big advocate because I take a lot of other supplements from other companies because I don't make everything for everybody I have a mm. very specific marketing niche of products that we manufacture right. so you got to be out there doing the work I I buy supplements from Target sometimes they they make some great products and great quantities yeah. and so I'm, I'm not afraid to try other companies' supplements. And I, 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 and I see a lot of issues with labels today. I'll go into mm, a store. You, really? You, yeah, you'll, you'll walk into a major supermarket or a food chain and you'll be looking and you're like, 
So uh, the QA department let this pass. That's interesting. This is a this is a claim. This is a claim. There's no asterisk. This is well, you, no nope, can't say that. You know anything that you're saying that you can't substantiate, you shouldn't be buying. You shouldn't be buying the bottle. You should be buying what's in the bottle. Yeah, yeah. So I, I one of the pieces of advice that I give all marketers, I'm like, you've already sold the customer. It's not like I'm selling in a retail chain. I'm selling to marketers who are selling online. Get away from making claims anywhere on your label. You don't need it. You don't need it on your packaging or anything. If you sell it on your website, that's one thing. As long as you can substantiate it and you've got clinicals and you've got marketing material, yeah. uh, you, you, you can back it up. Knock yourself yeah. out. But I say err on the side of caution. Be very careful when you're making any types of supplement claims, yeah. any claims. What are some other big mistakes you're seeing? Supplement entrepreneurs? Uh, the one thing that I think happens to a lot of marketers, instant gratification. We go really, really, really fast wanting what we want right now. And if we don't get it, we quit. And I tell people don't quit. You mean they give up too soon? Yeah. A lot of people like, you know, or they'll come in with uh, the mindset of I've got 15, 30, 40, $100,000 to invest. Uh, I'm here to be living proof. That's a lot of money, but it's not probably enough to launch a successful uh, supplement business. Uh, Marketing alone is going to eat you up. Building a great website, building the right marketing. A lot of people don't know how to save a sale, how to help a customer. They, all they care about is the front end. They just want to make the sale, but they forget about all the other stuff that they've already acquired a customer. Now what are you doing to help that customer years down the road? And I think that goes back to you know, lead with your heart, not your wallet. Build a supplement company or business today that actually has so much value. People keep coming back because they know that you care. And so what I see a lot of customers do and clients today is that they, they just think about dollar signs. They just want to make a lot of money. I'm like, but I'm in year 15. How many years have you been around? Oh, I'm just getting started. Let me give you a piece of advice that I've been using for 15 years. That's right. so much value, but they have to come back because they just know that you treat and respect and take care of your people. Yeah. You know, you're going to make a good product. And another thing that I tell people, and I'm happy to say it on this, this podcast, is that we make mistakes. So be okay making a mistake. What did you learn from it? That's the thing that I really care about. Like, what did you learn from the mistake? Mistakes are always going to happen. That's life. However, what are you doing about them? How are you getting better? How, how are you tweaking your marketing? Or how are you working in your customer service department to, to make less errors? Like, we, we'll still short you a bottle from time to time. I got humans. Humans working. <laughs> not a machine i'm not automated i even some of the greatest companies in the world who have logistics down to you know what still make mistakes things happen so also understand at the end of the day it's the the old saying you know the customer's always right so i just you can you can yell at me and tell me where i went wrong i'm gonna say you're right let me go fix it let me make it better um so yeah i mean making mistakes is something that i've learned too. just get up as fast as you can don't sit in your spot for too long Just learn that that's part of life and business, but make sure that you're taking lessons from it and applying it to the future so that it doesn't happen again. Yeah. And Tony, I know obviously a huge important part is your two partners. Um, What's the division of labor? And has it changed? Um, So Doug, uh, accounting background, mindset, um, always, uh, I think, hopeful but also stands back just a little bit to say, um, all right, cool. Let's pause for a second. Gil, I think Gil's the balance between the teeter-totter. I'm, I'm jumping on my side. Like, I'm like, I got the greatest idea. It's the best invention ever since sliced bread. You guys are going to love this. And Gil's like, all right, tell me a little bit about it. How much time and focus have you put onto it? Right. I'm like, I've spent a little bit of time. Okay, cool. So Doug, we're going to proceed with caution. And, and that has happened. But then on the other hand, I come in, like we're, we're looking in a new uh, segmented market right now. And Gil and I got together and said something and went in and pitched it to Doug. And Doug's like, okay, cool. But that isn't, okay, cool. Let's launch it. Okay, cool. Let's go do some more work. But he's on board. Right. And that's what really happens with the, the tripod philosophy. Yeah. I've got same partners today that I had in 2001. We're yeah. just a little bit more mature. We, we've grown up a little bit. We've seen a little of the adversity. We've seen a little of the issues. We've seen how things shake out when you just yeah. keep moving forward. Um, year 15. I will tell you this. I absolutely am grateful that I've got two amazing partners that I've known since I was basically two and three. 
That's pretty crazy. All my life. Um, they show up big in my life. They inspire me to keep moving forward. They allow me um, creativity and flexibility. I don't like being called a visionary because I, I think the only thing I'm really good at is, is, is vision for my life, my family, and helping people around them to see. Um, but literally, that's what I got to do here. I got to be creative. I got to go to a lot of events. I, I get to help a lot of people. I spend more of my time working on mindset hacks with people today then I probably really do focus on building a business, but it's kind of funny how it all works. If I can help a customer today to see where they need to work on some things, but I do it in a unique way, then the formula that I really am giving them is I am a, a truly a strategic partner. I'm passing on years of experience. So you don't go down the same rabbit holes that I've gone down and get derailed and lose focus. And that's why I try yeah. to get people to focus more on what can they do today than what they didn't do yesterday. Yeah. So, what's someone, a piece of advice you gave someone that they actually really took to heart that was a huge, had a huge impact on them? Like a strategic uh, partner advice. Yeah, man, keep your money in your pocket, number one. What do you mean? You know, like everybody wants the next, you know, hot product. I got to put my name, my label on it. It's got to be my vision. I'm like, cool. Like, don't be a fool. Don't do that. If, I, if you listen to any part of this whole interview process, I keep telling you, like, learn from your mistakes. Learn from my mistakes. Fail my way before you fail your way. So take everything that I'm telling you and just apply this one piece of logic. Why would you want to launch something when you're talking to a, co a company that basically has products on demand? So I have a tested, incubated system that's tried and true and works. You don't have to spend a single dollar, right, until you actually make a sale. So why don't you go spend your time and energy finding marketing partners, mm -hmm. have your website assets designed and built, and then throw my product in the funnel and test it. Yeah. I guarantee you my product is not causing the buyer to not buy from you. So, if you so they're thinking about from scratch yeah, their own formulation, buying whatever minimum it is, and you're saying just, just hold up for a second. A lot of people will say like, hey, I got $100,000 to make a new product with you. I'm like, that's awesome. I'd rather have you get 250 units in my wholesale department before I even put you in my fulfillment system right. and let you try to sell it. And then people go, well, how could I sell? I'm like, well, I would take that 250 and I would go sell on eBay. Why would I sell on eBay for? I'm like, well, let me tell you something. eBay is a pretty interesting machine. It's been around for a long time. You're going you're gonna to go sell on eBay. And you um, and I even tell people before they even want to go down that route, I go, go buy eight things from eBay from eight different buyers. Now, transfer that same mindset over to Amazon and go buy eight packages of eight different things and see how it's packaged. See the insert. See yeah. if some people send you a tracking number, yeah. like literally start Great advice. Looking, I love that. Look, yeah. Like how buyers are thinking and how sellers are communicating yeah. and then take the what you do like and what you don't like and start applying that because have most people that I'm talking to have never started a supplement company. They're really good at selling information-based products, and then they transition to wanting to sell something because someone like me is at an event or a mastermind and says, hey, you've got a great marketing list. You could literally introduce supplements, but here's what I would do, and here's what I wouldn't do. What I wouldn't do is go out and make anything from scratch. Right. Um, anything that you can get in low quantities, do that to start and just test the waters. Um, and then from there, like if you do say, okay, Tony, I've, I've, I want it. I know it. Then cool. Then we have our minimums of what we work with somebody on a custom formulation. Then we take it out and we go run it to the labs that we work with because we're contract manufacturers. So at the end of the day, I just got really good strategic partnerships with a lot of great labs. Then we go out and get quotes from three or four different labs. We bring those numbers back to you and let you make a decision. And then I hope that you take the advice, which is, Tony, what would you do? Because Everything that I'm telling you is, is like, I'm more concerned about you. Right. I'll already get taken care of. I'm already, I'm already fine with that. But I really want you to focus more on, like, throw your dreams to the side for a minute and let's get common sense. Like, does it make sense to go spend $80,000 today on a what if? How about a proven, right. strategic, implemented strategy that's duplicatable? That only is going to cost you, if anything, because you want to test on eBay and Amazon, a couple hundred dollars versus eighty thousand dollars. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So when I, I love the visual of you jumping on a teeter totter for one, and um, when was a time you were jumping on the teeter totter, and they you, they actually you follow through with the idea like Dog Gill were like yes, 
Let's move forward. And when was the time they said this is a crazy harebrained thing? We are not exploring this at all. Um, interesting. So when they said yes and everything was great, I yeah. think is when I came back from the show at Traffic and Conversions, and I said I think it's time. Gil had just purchased the domain a few months back with Ship Offers. Um, so we all we're living in Colorado. Well, we all were living in Southern California before, and I remember what that looked like. I remember. We've been out here twice, my wife, and then once with my wife and the kids, and then Doug had come out with his family, and then uh, Gil with his family. And I was back in Gil's office one day, and, and Gil's sitting around my computer, and Doug walks in, and he's like, all right, boys, what'd you decide? And I'm, I've, I've already convinced Gil. Like, maybe, like, let's just stay in L.A. I think it's going to be easier, right? I'm like, let's just stay. And Doug's like, hey, guys, you have until Monday. It's Friday afternoon. You need to make your decision. I'm moving. He said he's moving. Basically, yeah, yeah. Even though we all kind of agreed, but I was backtracking because once again, I was like, that's a scary, uncomfortable place, right? Yeah. Why were you considering moving anyways? I think we all wanted a change for yeah. our families and life. And so it's interesting. Now that I just said this, I really got why I was backtracking. It wasn't my idea. I don't like being told what to do. He told me right then and there. And so I just put my trust again in the process of a partnership. And I said, hey, what's really good for the company is, you know, probably mixing it up a little bit. Not always going with what I say. Because right. uh, what I love about us is with having a tripod philosophy, all three agree or we don't do it. Two agree, one does it, doesn't get done. Mm. And so I think in that moment became another example of what does a partnership look like? A partnership is... You believe in your partners, and I've been out of the country a lot traveling, that they're going to do the next right thing. And I just, you know what I said, Doug, Gil, I'm on board, whatever that is, whatever that is. I've had a lot of harebrained ideas, launching a podcast. Sure, whatever you want, Tony, no big deal, launch it, you know. I'm trying to think of what is something that I've recently said that they said no to. Oh, that's probably like getting a third or a fourth or even a second facility somewhere around the world. They're like, yeah, we're not there yet. But I've like Costco mentality. I'm like, let's open fulfillment centers across the United States and then into Australia and, you know, in the UK. And they're like, no. You know, so I have that where I know right. that I may come with something crazy. They're like, we're, there, we're not there yet. But they don't tell me no. Right. What they really say is we're not there yet. And yeah. I think that's been very helpful for this addictive mindset that I have is they now know, like, don't tell me no. Because if you tell me no or it can't be done, it's done. I, I will already figure <laughs> out how to, how to make it happen. So they know <laughs> how to manipulate this machine over here. <laughs> but um, no, right. I, mean, I wouldn't be anywhere I am today without first and foremost, uh, like my God, a higher power, my wife, my wife, my two boys, my mom. I lost my dad two years ago, my sister. Mm, sorry to hear that. I have an adopted brother, an amazing group of friends, an amazing group of friends. I, I have most of my friends from my childhood. I still keep in contact mm. with them. Um, I literally, as I was leaving my neighborhood today, I knocked on one of my, uh, one of my buddy's doors. He, he grew up seven houses down from me in, in Santa Cruz, and he moved here few years back and, and I, we live seven houses down from each other and That's I just wild. opened his door this morning and he stuck out his hand and I'm like, nah, give me a big hug. I just gave him a hug. And I said, I love you. And I, I drove off. Um, I just have a, a sense of just awe about life and, and people. And, and then you, you talk about your two business partners, their family, you know, their family. And, yeah. and so I, I love what I get to do. I love that at year 15, I believe, even being an alcoholic saying this, like we're like a bottle of fine wine. We're just getting better with age. We are just literally getting better with age. We are working on building a team. So I don't have to be at every show. I'm sending people now. That's been huge for me this year. The trust, allowing growth to happen. I kind of feel like the, the, the circle of life, it's coming full circle. I'm able now to really plan the next three to five years in my life. My vision's pretty crazy. So I am literally figuring out um, what does that look like, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. Um, and these guys are like, hey, man, let's go for it. Gil and myself yesterday were at something that could literally revolutionize and change our business. I had spent a couple hours with um, some prospective uh, partnerships, and I am literally signing a lease to acquire more space as we speak. If what I believe happens, 
Um, I'm going to tell you guys right here, right now, three and a half years, I'm going to be traveling the world, not because I, I um, need to. It's because I want to, because I want to go and, and bring ship offers to the world in a lot of unique ways. It's, I don't want to just be a supplement company. That's what scares my partners a little bit when I start speaking like this. Yeah. So what does that look like? I mean, to give an idea of it's... Fulfillment operations like in uh, the East Coast, West Coast, overseas, having manufacturing made overseas, delivered to uh, companies in the morning, or all the orders split and all the countries get their shipments. Um, I see a little version of a, a mini, mini ship offers in all these countries where like somebody could acquire it as like a franchise. They could open their own little ship offers like in China or the UK and they have their, their portfolio that we're giving them and then they're, they're working on building other relationships around them. That's, I'm telling them, like, this is my idea. Like yeah. if someone steals it, so, so be it. I just believe it. I think that, there's a lot to execute on that. So. Oh, yeah. man, it's, yeah. it's a lot. And uh, we built a lot of software and technology behind it. But like right now, we're just focused on one day at a time. You know, one shipment at a time. And uh, yeah, it's amazing. But I, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, you're talking about something that wakes me up in the morning. I love coming here. I love incubating ideas and thoughts in my, 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 my rooms. And I, I love talking to the staff. And I love getting everybody excited. You know, and I say I'm not a visionary. I think I say that because I don't want to hold myself into a certain light. I just really want to help people today. What um, You just moved into a new space, right? We outgrew it in like three months. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the biggest space we've ever acquired, literally the, the new paperwork for the space next door that we're going to knock down walls and double. Um, we're literally looking at the paperwork as we speak. So yeah. how did you outgrow it so quickly? Got some really amazing marketers. Got some really amazing people working with us on doing some really incredible things. Um, you know, our portfolio... Three years ago was 100% on-demand supplements. So everything we manufactured, we were selling to the customers. They were labeling it. Today, our portfolio is diverse. I believe that like in this day and age, the name ship offers, I do not want to be synonymous with supplements. I think that's where it's been. Mm -hmm. And I think what people are realizing is like, mm -hmm. wow, you put out an excellent product and service and you got great people and things look awesome. Would you be interested in this? And, I, and I, I'm really trying to live with the mindset like yeah. of a mouse pad like if it fits like in a mouse pad like box size like yes. i ship it all day long yeah and i figured out the sweet spot of what makes fulfillment work i i, I can ship 5 10 15 20 000 orders a day hmm. like i literally have created that mindset that we can go do this we got people we have systems and now we need space and so uh yeah we grew 600 percent last wow. year congratulations uh, we kind of evened a little bit this year a little flat um, still, still an amazing year and excited. This has been the year of growth. This is the year that we went from like 10, 12 employees to just under 30. And so a lot of that comes with trials and tribulations and adjustments and trusting and helping and having people work with you. And, um, yeah, no, we're, we're gearing up for an amazing 2017. The, the, the pre-orders, the numbers that are sitting on the calendar, it's, it's going to be a, just an amazing year. And I think really, that's why I can't get too far ahead of myself. I got to get present with you that I woke up today with a grateful little attitude and mindset. And that's why the addictive mindset, which is like forecasting too far out, I got to remember that I have to get present. And that's what helps me throughout the day is because I can, I can almost see like what three years looks like today, but I can't go there today. I got to go I, where I'm at right here, right now with mm -hmm. you. That's the only thing that matters too, by the way, which is an interesting point. I use this as my centering mechanism. Jeremy, you're the only thing that matters to me right now in my life because it's the only thing that I can actually participate in. Right. Everything else, all the distractions, all the people, my kid, and his monitor going off, my wife where she's at, my son in school, like I have no control over that. I just have control over you and me right now having a conversation. Right. Tell me a bit about, you mentioned gum, which that you, <laughs> I'm going back to this because what are some other products that are interesting that you've shipped? I just, that for some reason got my creative mind space. flowing. What's that? I've got a lot of guys in the survival space. Yeah. Like, I think when you, uh, tinctures, I've seen people sell lipsticks, chapstick, gum has always been interesting. It was like weight loss gum. And I'm like, 
you can barely put anything in it. But like if you chew enough of it, I guess that saliva builds up and you're not as hungry. But I think the reverse the psychology, I just get hungrier if I was chewing gum all the time. <laughs> um, I think from from the things that are people doing now, which is, you know, coffee cups that have weight loss properties in them with their coffee and right. the creamers. Um, I think I mean selling hats and everything. But I think at the end of the day, I think I want to find products that add value to somebody's life. I don't want to see – it's really hard, right? Marketers are awesome. They know, they know how to make money. What can we do to change the world? That yeah. – when I sit down and I actually start talking about like what's hot, what's next, what's new, my, I've shifted a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I want to make money, of course. But what, what could we do to change the world? Yeah. Right. So that's – So what do you I'm, think? What well, products – I think it goes back to how I chaired the meeting this morning. It's how I think I live my life, which is hope. I think that we are, we are the change. Gandhi, Gandhi instilled that to me a long time ago, be the change you wish to see in this world. I think it starts with us. I don't think it starts with the next you know, cup of Starbucks. But I do think that it's the gateway to, to be of service and to help others. And that's why I do what I do. You know, From the cup of gratitude that I've been offering up for people, it's where I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Will you share it with somebody? Those are the little things that I can do. The, um, you know, pushing in a shopping cart when I go to the grocery store. People go, why are you pushing in somebody else's shopping cart? Well, I kind of believe what my sponsor helped me to see. Is like, uh, and I just was with my sales staff this morning saying this one thing, and I think this is really just impactful. What are you bringing to the table today? If you lined up everybody you knew and you said, hey, there's a line, go get in line. How many of your friends and family members would go into the kitchen instead of getting in line to, make, you know, to just eat food, right? Because we're, we're hoarders in a lot of ways. We just go and we just serve, 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 and we eat more and more and more, and our plate's over full, and we just go, oh, God, I got to get more and more and more and more. And next thing you know, it's like, well, who's making the food? I'm like living in that world right now. I'm wanting to go, go over there. I think that's where change has always been. And I want to live over there. I want to help get more people over to that side. What are you bringing to the table today? So when I see a shopping cart at a grocery store out of place, I just push it back. People go, why are you doing that? Help that guy. He's already got enough to do. Look around. There's millions of shopping carts sitting around in this parking lot. Right. So I start thinking like, what can I do? What small little random act of kindness, what can I do? If it's buying somebody a cup of coffee, it's pushing a shopping cart. If it's to stay late, come early. If it's to pick up trash, if it's to close a door, if it's to say please and thank you, to hold the door when people won't even say anything, but you keep holding the door because you know, as Jim Rohn always says, there's really only you know nine or 10 miserable people in this world. They just seem to move around a lot, right? It keeps me laughing, but it keeps me going forward that I know that the change that I seek in the world begins with me nowhere else. It doesn't matter about the president. It doesn't matter about who won the championship. It doesn't matter about anything other than what change can I bring to my life today and the lives yeah. of the people around me? What, what am I bringing to the table today? Yeah. You mentioned earlier, Tony, about the team growing so much. Um, what kind of team does it take to run ship offers? <laughs> it takes a lot of hope, a lot of faith, and a lot of people who wake up ready to make a difference. It's hard. Like you know? when you grow that quickly, what are you hiring for at that point? I, I hire for character, first and foremost. Your resume is just a bunch of BS. Sorry, don't mean to be offensive, but it's making you look amazing. Right. So I'm actually in the process of hiring a, an assistant right now. And I found just a LinkedIn article for hiring a rock star assistant. Gentleman's Darius. I don't know his last name. And I'm literally using the framework right now. Yeah. And the response has been overwhelming, incredible. People are saying, like, I don't even want to apply for the job. Well, I do want to apply. What for do you, what's the framework? Like, what, are you, what are you doing? Well, I'm trying to find an executive assistant. No, I mean, you said there's a framework that you're... Oh, yeah. So basically what it is, is it says it describes you and everything about you. So the person reading it, like, oh, that's totally me. Da, 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 da. And then it says, if this sounds like you, I need you to do these three things, which is email me, write a PDF cover letter, PDF resume, and send it in. 
then I literally take it. And if you follow through, I, I respond back with, here's the next five steps. Here's the, like, here's the next five steps. And so funny is, is that so many people think, oh, that's totally me. And they write all this great fluff. And the bottom line is, is they don't care. They didn't read. They only need a paycheck because that's just what they need. And I'm not, I'm not putting anybody down. But the problem is, is most people don't see everything through. They just see an ounce. They go, oh, I got it. I'm like, did you see that it said, please hit email, reply with PDF. Not a Microsoft Word document, not a text document, not an explanation document, a PDF. And then when they say, hey, send it to me, then I send them the outline. I don't even show them the price. I don't tell them anything until they actually do work. Because I realized today, everybody is after something. And so now I've created with a system, I've, I've modified just a hair, but I, I believe it, it works. Then they'll go, sure, send me, send me project number one. So project number one is basically I'm traveling from this location to that location. And I leave on this date. You need to be good with this because you said in your, you know, the, the beginning of the, the ad that you need to be good with like travel. So I literally give them everything. And then they hand me back my, my flight schedule and they tell me where I'm going, the hotel I'm staying, who's picking me up, the meetings, because I've given them a little bit of that guideline. And then it just goes on from there. And so now I've done phone interviews now uh, tomorrow and uh, I'm meeting uh, face to face. So it's, it's been an interesting process. I've, I've received probably 30 applications out of 30, probably 15 followed through out of 15, probably seven said yes. So now I'm in the process of interviewing seven. But I've actually got excited about the hiring process. Well, why? Because I'm hiring for what? Character and culture. Of course, being one of the, the main guys in the company, I want to make sure that the, the new blood coming to this company gels with the rest of us. Mm-hmm. How you know, do you so, find all these people oh, to apply? I, so warehouse is easy. You go ask warehouse workers. You say, hey, guys, do you have anybody that thinks like you, works like you? And another thing is I've found the most talented people. They're ex-employees of Walmart, Target, companies that either grew too fast and you know didn't do it and i literally just love on my on my team i literally that's like one of the secrets that i would tell anybody today like hey how do you build a successful team love on them more than you maybe love on yourself people just really need to be loved and so treat them all the time to food and just thank yous and at christmas time i i get excited and i don't put on a santa suit But I hand out gift cards for random things that they do at any time. I'm just like, thanks. And people don't expect it. They just appreciate it. And I think when you just walk up to an employee or a team member and you say, thanks, you make a difference in this organization, they have a sense of pride. And so by doing so, then they feel confident enough that they could go ask their friend who maybe just lost their job, like, hey, my boss, my company, you know, needs a new employee. Would you be interested in coming meeting? So we go through that process. So our hiring process is more like, who do you know that would be interesting? Who would be a good fit for here? The one policy we have is um, no significant others, no spouses. You can't. So if you work here, you can't have your spouse come in. You know, it just it just won't work. The chemistry, I think, would get thrown off. Yeah, Tony G, this has been amazing. Um, I so appreciate you and and thank you for the time and expertise. I have one last question um, uh, before I ask it. Let's point people towards ship offers dot com and tony g show dot com right um anywhere else we should point people towards those are the that two works. two main ones um you know i was watching a video your about video the other day and um i think it was towards the end you held up a piece of paper and there was highlighting on it and one of the things that you talked about was goals that scare you right so I'm, I was wondering some of those things now. And I don't mm-hmm. remember the logistics. You, you talked about there was an orange highlighting and yellow highlighting for certain reasons. I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about that, but you make a list of things and then you also. Share the, the framework around it to help yeah, the audience. Yeah. So a good buddy of mine, Kevin Cohen, shared a piece of advice that he got from somebody, which was uh, drainers and drivers. Yeah. You know, you literally just draw like a T on a page and at the top of it on the left, you write drainers on the right, you write drivers. And as you go about your day, your week, your month, every time you do something, it doesn't matter what it is. You just write down what it is and does it drain you or drive you? And then I have people on the other side of that page write down everything that's happened, good or bad, in the last 90 days. Good or bad. 
you know, I got a parking ticket, you know, I ran out of gas. Good thing is I saw a friend's baby be born, blah, blah, just write it all down. So like just as much as you can actually commit to take the highlighter. Like I use today we did, we had four colors today. So I'm colorblind, but I can see these. So yellow, orange, pink, and blue. And everything that's good in your life that happened in the last 90 days, highlight an orange energy, highlight an orange. And then everything that happened that was like something, something bad. And some people say like, what's your, your, your definition of bad? It's just something that didn't make you feel good, but it happened. Right. So like it could be somebody died, right? Like it, it doesn't make you feel good. You're very sad. Right. Um, and pick, pick a color that works for you. So just for this, this example, use pink. And so now the very, very bottom of that page, I want you to now after everything's highlighted, the page is full, I want you to write um, good. So I want you to write good and then give a little space and write bad for the time being. Now I want you to go count everything that's good that happened in the last 90 days. Mm -hmm. So you, you, know, you get 30 of them or 50 of them or 100 of them, you put them in the good category. And then the bad, you put all the stuff that happened in the bad and you put it on the bad. Now I want you to get out a calculator really, really quick, and I want you to take 90 divided by how many bad things happened to you and give me the number. So for the average person, it's like one in every four days. Something bad happens. Now you're aware that like you're not going to have a perfect week, but you're aware of it. It doesn't mean that you can't overcome it. It just means, bam. So now take the calculator, calculate 90, but divide it by all the things that are good in the last 90 days. And it tells you like you're having something good happen to you every day, mm -hmm. every other day. So what are you celebrating in your life? The stuff that isn't working or the stuff that is. And it, it really just in that moment helps people to switch and pivot from a negative mindset to a, gra a grateful mindset and literally say like, man, there's so much good going on in my life. Turn off the news, go outside, meet a complete stranger, get on a plane ride and spend 30 minutes getting honest. Like, do good for the world around you and watch the things around you change. I mean, the exercise is really just another way of getting you to look at getting present and honest in your life. Mm -hmm. And I do it all the time. I mean, my staff and I, we were doing something this morning. Like I posted a thing on my Facebook wall last night. I asked my friends and family, I said, what's my biggest strength and my greatest weakness? Mm. What, what did you, what, what surprised now, you? What they say. A couple of the things that really, uh, one of our mutual friends, Vinny Fisher, I know you, you had him on as a guest. Yeah. Um, you know, I think some of it is like I have had some hurt and some of that stuff that I've dealt with, like in my past, like still shows up in other areas of my life. Like I've overcome a lot and I know I've hurt a lot of people. So like he was able to read through that. And that's what's cool is like I have friends today in my life who will call me out on my you know what. And then I got a lot of friends who like, you're a great guy. And I'm like, that's awesome and all, but I actually am asking because I learn from the therapy that I'm getting, right? right. It's not like I, I don't need you to sugarcoat me an answer. Right. I need you to tell me the truth right. because if you're honest with me, that's going to enable me to be honest with others. And, and I've said this many times and I, I always leave it on podcasts when I get interviewed is that I believe asking for help is not a sign of weakness, but a sign of greatness. Mm. I believe when we actually are empowered to raise our hand, because we learn through education that it's okay to, to raise your hand when you have a question, but later in life, we forget that. We put our hands behind our back. We got this thing figured out called life. The biggest lesson I ever learned is when I was literally about to commit suicide and that phone rang, I did not call for help. Hmm. Man, someone reached out for help and, and literally changed they my They asked mind. help from you. Yeah, my buddy came and, um, yeah, I mean, it... it it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing when I talk about anything in my life, the, the greatest joy is to be able to be present with you today. That's the greatest joy. It's, it's the, the experience that I'm almost missed out on because I took my life. Hmm. It's the greatest joy. I try anybody you could ask anybody in my life. I think that Tony tries too hard. I think that's what would be a common theme. Tony still tries too hard. He extends himself too much. I only sleep five hours a night. I think those are all great things for me to, you know, keep in my mind. Like, hey, you know what? Why do you do that? Oh, you spent a lifetime trying to look good to avoid looking bad. Oh, so you still have some of that old mentality. I'm just working on being a better version today than I was yesterday. That's it. So a lot of what 
I think I'm a part of what I'm doing in my life is really simply saying, what can I do today to learn more about me from other people? Not that I care about what your opinion of me is, but I definitely value your opinion in the state that I asked for it. Right, right. I don't need you to give me your opinion, but if I'm asking for it, right. we're in, we're, we're having a, a very connected conversation. I want you to be honest. I want you to tell me. You know, we just finished one of the craziest political uh, elections that I've been a part of. And, and I tell you what, yeah, people have an opinion. <laughs> people have an opinion. So I'm asking for people's <laughs> opinion and I'm okay with what they say right. because I'm learning more about me. And I'm learning about, man, I can make a difference today. Yeah. I'm, I'm inspired by these answers. And uh, I, I was writing back saying thanks, you know, some good perspective. Any final parting words, lessons, anything we should leave people with? Uh, obviously, we've left them with a lot at this point. I could, I could go on for another four hours Strong. on one of these topics. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, man. Be your word. Be your word. Work every single day at being your word. Uh, when you mess up, clean up your mess. I love Jim's line. Don't leave him in the mess. Like, just be your word. And I think the more that you can work on being your word, the more you'll honor and love and yourself. It'll help you to go and see the world as an amazing place that we get to do some of the most amazing things. Um, but it all goes back to being my word. And my commitment to others is to help people today. That's my commitment. Um, that's why... I'm grateful for this opportunity to share a little bit of the craziness, a little bit of the all over the place ping pong ball, Tony Grebmeyer. Um, I'm grateful that we've been able to build, I believe a friendship still love the man crate. Um, <laughs> what, what I believe is that I think there's so much good in this world. And I think that we have the opportunity today to, to be the change we wish to see in this world. And that starts with me. It doesn't start with anybody else. It starts with me. It starts with me being my word, my commitment around why I got up today. I ask people a lot of the times, I said, why did you get up today? I don't want the sugar-coated version. Why did you get up today? Dan Shell writes, says, contribution. I want to go contribute. I'm going to go make a difference. I want to go do something today that's never been done before. Tony's never lived this day before. Jeremy's never lived this day before. That's big enough for me. It's yeah. a great start. And so I just want to go out and, and I, I want to be my word and be the change. Yeah. Tony, I want to be the first one. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. No, I love you, man. Yeah. I, I sincerely mean it. I think that we, we lose focus sometimes. We lose focus, uh, and we need people to help remind us of why we do what we do. And you have been a constant. I, I tell you, out of all the people that I get to work with, um, you have made some of the most amazing intros of people in my life as a super connector, which I, I like to say I'm, I'm really good at connecting. My, my partner said, hey, what's on your plate today? I said, oh, I'm doing an amazing interview with Jeremy. It's going to be awesome. Oh, the guy with glasses, the guy who introduces us to everybody. I'm like, yeah, that guy's like, oh, wow. he's awesome. So that's the contribution that you have. It's mm, not just thank you. me. My partners recognize it. It's, huh. This guy from Chicago, he, he's good. He's, he's got a, a podcast show. That's the contribution you're making in my life is that you make a difference. So oh. I just want to say thanks back at you. Yeah, you're very welcome and you make it easy. So thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.